hello welcome to another video where i'm using my new headset for the first time the other one was a little bit loose i don't know if you saw in the, in the last video but uh, then i have a new one and i have new battles to show you as well actually from andrews again um she has like interesting picks that i don't have even for moss league she has a this, last time she had a salazzo this time she has um a shadow riperior and is actually going to put in a lot of work let's take a look at these battles so let's take a look at the team that she has here. She has Lugia, Solgaleo, an extremely bulky core, and then Shadow Rhyperior. Lugia basically is a very neutral Pokemon that can deal with Pokemon like Landris and Kyogre. Um, she is playing ABB against both of those because both Solgaleo and Rhyperior don't have a great matchup against Landris and Kyogre. So Solgaleo serves as the safe switch here, baiting out that counter that would free up Rhyperior. And Rhyperior, if you played like Ho-Oh Dialga before, you know how annoying this Pokemon is. It's in the back here, though, for in Andrew's team. And you're going to see it's going to clean up some teams of Dialga, of Zacian slash Xerneas, and ho oh, oh, there's so many of them. All right, first battle we take a look at is an interesting lead here. I, yeah, I would assume that you want to draw out a potential Landris or any other, uh, like a Kyogre. You want to draw that out immediately to clear for the Rhyperior. Rhyperior has quite some weak spots. Going for a Psychic Fang. Um, and building up more energy, I do like that, but I don't really see reason not to throw Iron Head there, especially if they stay in, which is wild, honestly. They go in Dialga, clearly not ha really having a Solgaleo answer. Obviously, when Solgaleo is already so low, Dialga is quite fine here, because it takes a while before Solgaleo can even start ramping up here, since you have to kind of keep throwing those Psychic Fang. The other option that you could have as Solgaleo is Flamethrower, which is neutral, but not the same type of attack bonus, makes it really lacking in its damage. After two debuffs, though, this makes Dialga an a very easy farm for that Lugia, and that's exactly what Andres is going to do here. Even if it would get to a roar of time, Lugia can take it easily, and the opponent doesn't even get to an attack here. So he's just gonna throw. Going for a sky attack, not even building up to the arrow blast here. Maybe the opponent didn't count properly, but I don't think this gets... Oh, it does get shoot, okay. Maybe they're weak to Lugia in the back, taking this attack on the right period. It's close combat, it would do a lot, especially on Shadow. It is play rough, which still would have done a chunk, honestly. Opponent still staying in. Then switching into Mewtwo. Going for the Rock Wrecker. Oh man, this would do so much damage for Lance. I reckon this gets shielded though. Holy! Okay. <laughs> okay, goodbye Mewtwo. Um, here's the thing though. If they um, if they did shield and it was a breaking swipe, I believe that Andrew would have been like 3 or 4 off another attack. And she would get there. So I, I guess maybe an, a necessary no shield from the opponent. But man, that was a lot of damage. In the next battle, Anders gets a great lead here, the Palkia. You have Dragon Tail as Lugia and your Bulky, so this is a really good matchup. I should do super effective damage quite consistently, and Lugia has such a high stat distribution. Like, even if this is a Spatial Ranch, she sneaks a full Dragon Tail in there too. Um, this would, like, this is actually a really strong charge stack, but not good enough for Lugia. Trying to catch on the Ho, -Oh and she actually does opt for that Arrow Blast. I'm not sure if that's necessary, um, but this does make it a little bit easier for the right period to take it on. This break is why I won't knock out yet, I think. Um, but you can probably mud slap down, come out with some energy, which you need against Palkia. Palkia is not even that bad of a matchup for Rhyperior. Um, simply because, like, you have super effective breaking swipe, which is big. So let's see what comes in here. This might indicate it could be a Landris in the back, though. And Palkia is thrown before Landris does actually. Or sorry, Rhyperior does. It actually does decide to shield it up. I, that's an interesting play. This is also interesting. Building up more energy. Um, so the next Pokemon gets less farm, but man, it's a Togekiss. Well, that's one thing that you definitely won't see because Solgaleo is a beast here. And that's, uh, well, a pretty, uh, <laughs> a pretty alignment game there. Next game, we get a more difficult lead. And the reason why is because Solgaleo has bulk and it resists everything. Honestly, this matchup is a little bit closer than it is, though. But Andrews wants to, like, bait out a Groudon, a Kyogre, or Landris straight from the start. So she switches into the Solgaleo and... Opponent is also staying in Solgaleo. This is a little bit of an annoying matchup because you kind of don't want to throw energy into this. This is double resisted, does nothing. Now the opponent switches into Palkia. I really like this play from the opponent simply because Palkia doesn't have a great matchup here either. But because you make more bearable with the Psychic Fang, it actually becomes fine now for Palkia. Let's see. Now the Psychic Fang comes through. We'll do a little bit more damage, but still not threatening for Palkia. Next one will knock out though. And, oh, she's trying to switch out and successfully actually keeping the Solgaleo interesting. Probably doesn't want to get farmed down. Um, Draco Meteor. No space rent on this Origin Palkia. And getting to another Aqua Tower. Well, this is uh, debuffed, so it won't do as much damage. Interesting. I think Draco Meteor is very viable on Origin Palkia. I don't think it's as good as Spatial Rent. 
What a catch from the opponent on the Solgaleo. I mean, both are steel, both are resisted. But this is even... This is... Like, she doesn't care at this point. You know what's going to be good here. It's that Rhyperior. It's going to mud slap through both of these Pokemon. And one thing that Rhyperior does better is that fast attack pressure. I think at this point, yeah, you kind of need to shield here. Because otherwise, you might get Dragon Breath down. The Alga might not even get to, char to charge sex here. Because that's what Shadow Rhyperior does better here. You do more, more mud slap damage. So, I believe that Shadow Rhyperior... Only needs to shield once to farm this down entirely. Whereas the regular one does need to shield uh, to shield twice or throw a breaking swipe in between to threaten Dialga. Uh, but not here. Not here. Look at how much it does in the next one. Oh, actually, hold up. Hold up. Maybe she does lose this. Is the Dialga already had so much energy? Oh, she's so close to Psychic Fang. But yeah, doesn't matter. I put that shield as well. Going for the fire spin down. It's a really close game. Damn. Here, Andrews is playing against my friend, Ja Green Lugia into Palkia. Ja Green, this is not a great lead for you. This is a great lead for Andrews, though. But he does decide to stay in. Might indicate that there might be something weak to Lugia in the back, which is not a lot. Mostly Pokemon like Mewtwo are not exactly favored to swap in. Pokemon like Groudon don't do great here. Um, usually with a Palkia lead, there's like Landers in the back. And I think at some point, Andrews does want to bait that out. Because Landers in the back is devastating for the back line. Not drawing a shield there. Then going into the Solgaleo. Catching an Aquatil actually very useful here. Um, because if it is Landris, this Solgaleo is just there to bait it out, right? Uh, because you have one Fire Spin in, you get to the defense drop early as well. You get the damage without before you get debuffed. Sansei Storm probably won't knock out just yet. You see the text saying not very effective. It, it's actually super effective, these smudge shots. The, the text are a little bit broken. Uh, but good thing you have me to tell you that. And... Oh, barely getting to another one. This might actually be crucial. Because you need to soften this Landris for the for Lugia to take care of it, right? What could be in the back here? Palkia? It could be anything, really. It could be Ho-Oh. It could also be something like Groudon. Um, even, but I've also seen Diago with this. And actually going for the no-shoot there, which is risky. But luckily, this has already been double debuffed. These Mud Slaps, double resistance, actually chunk pretty well. And two-shoot Rhyperia is so good against about anything that's not Togus. Even this! Yes, you have resisted, uh, double resisted Breaking Swipe. But this Ash probably has to debuff itself, and otherwise Quick Attack plus Player Off doesn't do that much damage. If you get a debuff here, you're gold. Yeah, gets the debuff. Opponent tries to catch and clear it at the same time, unsuccessfully. And Anders at this point going for the big Rock Wrecker. I like this play, because you probably get two anyway before Zashin gets to three. Attacks, and it does go through! Hell yeah! Alright, good stuff. Rapier putting a lot of work here. Next battle, we have the Altered Dialga form, and going into the Solgaleo right away. This is probably the war swap move yet. As Solgaleo, because Solgaleo is so helpless in this matchup. Psychic Fangs, yes, they add up, but it doesn't do that much. I and mean, your fire spins are resisted. Ho oh can just get so much energy there, knock you out, and be close to another charge stack against the next Pokemon uh, that will come in, which is likely the Lugia. On the other hand, though, Lugia will get a nice farm down here because you have now double debuffed the defenses of the Ho oh, so they'll be pretty comfortable. <clears throat> so far, this team is quite weak to Rapiri, honestly. I'm very curious to what's going to be in the back. If it is Landris, then this game is probably just the top left, um, which is very possible. Let's see. Team's also going to weak to, oh, to Landers itself, no? I don't expect a water type in the back. If Sky Ogre's over, Palkia, there's a lot of play still. And uh, this Aeroblast might actually pull a shield. If you played as Dialga against Lugia, you know how much this does, even when resisted. Yeah, there's a lot of damage. Going into Rhyperior and onto by Palkia. This is not a bad matchup because it's straight four Mud Slaps, which is 12 turns for a Breaking Swipe. It's also 12 turns for an Aquatil, for the first two at least, and the next one's 11, I believe. Uh, but that means, look at this, and the must are adding up, so your Rhyperior just lands one Breaking Swipe and slams through this bulk yard. It's crazy. They already took an Arrow Blast, so it's pretty low. I think you just must slap down here. Go for a break Swipe to, you know, weaken this, potentially weaken this. They all got, it's a 50% chance, but I think at this point you just, it just doesn't get the drop, but I don't think it matters. Because she doesn't throw the break swipe here, she gets another must slap of damage in there, and you know that uh, <laughs> ends the game a little bit earlier. Well played. Next game is against Crescent Angels, one of the best Japanese players, Lugia into Zashion. This is favorable for Zashion, but honestly, whenever there's the opportunity to, I think uh, Andres just looks for the opportunity to bait out like uh, Landors or something. So she just switches out. Zashion's not the worst matchup for Lugia, honestly. If you land your Arrow Blast uh, at the right time, like you're fine. Um, and usually, like, Sashin has to throw Wild Shards deep of itself, which is not super comfortable. This is also not the worst matchup, honestly. The Dragon Bats are resisted, and Songaleo is bulky. Three Psychic Fang with the Fire Spins, they will knock out! And look at that, since Psychic Fang charges so quickly, Aquatil still would barely not knock out here. This Songaleo is going to win the Zero Shield, which is madness. Well, looks like, uh, he's letting it go, Crystal Angels, going into the Zashin again. 
This might indicate that Crescent Angels might have two answers for the Lugia. But having your Rhyperior here is pretty fine. Now this is debuffed. Going into Dialga, not exactly a Lugia answer. Especially not a Rhyperior answer. I'm curious how you play this one out, because where do you put the Lugia now? Are you just gonna like slam through this with that Rhyperior? Where are those mud slaps going? She's throwing mud slaps at Crescent Angels, not at this Dialga. Yet it's getting hurt. Anyway, good shield. And you see here, one shield, farm down. Wild, right? Now go for a breaking swipe. Not even building up. Okay. Okay. Bo bold play. Crescent Angels knows. Uh, you know, some good players they count. Going for another breaking swipe. This this point is just 1 to 34 swipe. No shield again. And this is actually really tough because Lugia also has Dragon Fast attack output. So that means that it doesn't do any damage either. Hey, that's Wild Charge play, play rough here. But this, this session is just getting too low. This right here is like farming down the whole team. It's slapping on the whole team. Another breaking swipe. This finally is shielded. Now it's debuff, and it means that the Lugia would not uh, faint to two Wild Charge with quick attack. So like, right here just destroyed that backline. It was crazy. In the next battle, we see Lugia into Landris. This is exactly where you want this. Because this might indicate that the backline is strong against Pokemon like Kyogre. And Pokemon that are strong against Kyogre are usually not strong against Rhyperior or Solgaleo. Unless it's like a Zekrom. Well, that might have played against Solgaleo, but not so much. Not at all against Rhyperior. Um, but that's something you want to keep in mind. I would expect a Palkia when you see Landris. Those two are just so good together. Going for the Sky Tech there. In comes Origin, Dialga, a classic, and in comes Rhyperior to answer it right away. Let's see. Can you shield once, farm down again? It would be pretty wicked. I don't know if you can. Maybe not on energy disadvantage. Do we see it? Do you have to throw a break swipe? Oh, the opponent doesn't get there. It's huge. Especially considering you had no shields. Well, now you're, all your energy is gone though, but at least you have alignment. This looks tricky, actually. You need something like a fairy in the back at this point. Maybe... I, I don't know, man. Tokus. That, that's winnable. Tokus without flamethrower. Opponent gets to the stone edge here. I'm not sure if there was damage registration error, which means that the dragon tail should have landed there and knocked out. Yeah, the opponent got damage registration error. Very unfortunate for Andres, because otherwise she would have had a full Lugia and a full Sogaleo to deal with this uh, Zasha. But we've seen this story before, but then with the Rhyperior. Um, however... Solgaleo has a really good matchup here. Like, the first time I played Zacian uh, or Xerneas, I'm not sure which one of the two it was, against Solgaleo, I was surprised by how bad it is for the fairy. Because you lose charge stack priority. So if you throw your close combat here, um, and they have energy, they can just get charge stack priority on you, and you, you faint to an Iron Hat. Uh, in this case, it will only go straight Psychic Fang, and this close combat or wild charge will likely knock out but if it's close combat play rough oh my goodness does even knock out that another five spin <laughs> chaos and then uh yeah gg well played yeah that was definitely the pokemon you needed in the back there so andrew sent me multiple battles i'm not showing all of them in this video but this one had uh had to be there because it's um, sir cory so let's see uh, how sir cory does against shadow Rhyperior. he leads shadow ho -Oh into lugia this is a very neutral matchup, but Lugia does very fine here because of its bulk. If you get a debuff on that Ho-Oh right away, though. But she's going for the Sky Attack here. I don't hate this because Shadow Ho-Oh is more fragile. And you want to get this off before a potential debuff. Now, look at that. Going for a full Dragon Tail through there. And go for the Shield. Yeah, I mean, this is a very efficient attack. Gets the debuff. Now you can go on Rhyperior, though. Um, Sir Cory, a little bit weak to uh, Rhyperior. Um, and his timing. I may need to talk about him. Uh, I need, may need to talk about his timing. Let's see, getting the full farm down here. I don't think it gets two attacks. It does! On damage registration error again! Frustrating. Now Anders has no shields, no energy. And the opponent has two shields here. If that Ho-Oh will not come back onto the Solgaleo, this is over. But it does. Now if there's a fairy in the back, it could be a little bit better timing as well from Anders there. Generally you want to do three Dragon Tails for two Incinerate or one Dragon Tail for one Incinerate. Um, this attack will knock out the Lugia, unless the Solar Beam, but it's not. And the opponent likely switched out into Xerneas here. And this is actually still winnable. If you can get out with a move or uh, a charge attack on Solgaleo against the Ho-Oh, there might be play. But I reckon that Sir Cory keeps his shields here. Look at how much the Iron Head does. This is why Solgaleo is so good against those fairies. For a while, for a while, these fairies really seemed untouchable. But with Solgaleo, they no longer are. Not that I'm. You know, I'm not a fan of Solgaleo and Zygarde Core, but... Ooh, this actually gets really close now. This Psychic Fang won't knock out yet, but if Sir Cory shields that, and he does... I actually think that if you no-shield that, the Fire Spin may have knocked out. I don't know, it's a Shadow Ho. I don't know the bulk of it. But uh, yeah, that is a good game. Well played.
not not as strong as Rhyperia, but uh, luckily the Dialga forced her Corey got to Ironet there, but it was not enough to deal with the, the backline. In the next battle, Andris plays again against a Ho-Oh lead, a regular Ho-Oh this time, well, shiny Ho-Oh basically. And let's see if she throws Sky Attack here first as well, before potentially getting debuffed. I know that the zero shields going straight Sky Attack here is terrible. So that's generally not something you want to do, but I guess she just wants to weaken this for the Solgaleo in the back. So she just goes straight Sky Attack there. You know what's most obnoxious about the Ho-Oh? You know that there's likely going to be a Dialga in the back, because it's such a strong core. But your Imperial core breaks that. However, your Rhyperia might not be aligned to this at all. You don't get switch advantage here. But if your opponent keeps this Ho-Oh, they probably hard switch here. So let's see. Coming with the Rhyperia, in comes Zacian. Zacian now trapped by the Solgaleo. Which is a pretty terrible matchup. And this time we're actually going to see how terrible. If the previous ones weren't enough yet, where this thing was spamming Psychic Fangs, you'll find out now. Look at the Zero Shields here. This is not fun. As Zashin, this is just not fun. <laughs> you just, this Sogaleo has 50% HP. However, Ho-Oh does like this. You can go for a Psychic Fang here. Uh, maybe even two, depending on how much energy this Ho-Oh wants to get. This Psychic Fang won't do too much damage though. Ho-Oh has a lot of bulk. Not as much as Lugia, but... Respectable bulk. Going for another Psychic Fang here. And now Ho-Oh shields. In comes Rhyperior. Respecting any damage here. Especially if you expect Dialga on the back. I think you can get a full farm down. But none of you get debuffed here. Hold up, hold up. Opponent may be cooking here. But this time Andrew's is throwing Breaking Stripes. So that might change the scenario as well. No debuff for the opponent. But I believe that with the Mud Slabs, even though they're debuffed. And the Breaking Swipe, you probably have to shield only once here. I would assume at least. Breaking Swipe coming through. Again, no debuff. <laughs> I hate I hate RNG, bro. I hate RNG. Uh, has a breaking swipe now. And you put on top left? Wow. Okay, yeah. Rhyperia. See, this is what I mean. Rhyperia is so good against, like, Dialga. And uh, it's it's so good against Dialga ho -Oh. It's so bad against Palkia and Landros, though. So really an offset there. And in this case, for, for the better. Next, the final battle, we have Lugia into Mewtwo. Lugia loses the zero shields here. Because Mewtwo can get two Shadow Ball. Before you even get to one, uh, one Arrow Blast here, so... Let's see what Andrus is going to do. I think at some point you kind of want to switch out there. No, she decides to shield up immediately. Respecting the Shadow Ball. Does the opponent switch out? They don't. And she goes for the extra Dragon Tail. The opponent expected Andrus to get go for the Charge Tech priority, but she didn't. Shadow Ball comes through. And yeah, this is kind of rough. You can't really swap in your Solgaleo. It doesn't have a great matchup either. At least not when... Uh, at least not in this scenario. Oh, well, I guess the Mute is a little bit lower. Ooh, that's a great catch on the Dialga. But this is, I think this is exactly what Andrews wants. Just punish this Dialga. Origin Dialga, skinny Dialga. Um, yeah, it's just going to get farmed down here. Andrews going gonna to come out with so much energy. Remember how you saw that Shadow Mewtwo almost getting one-shot by that Rock Wrecker? Yeah, this, this next Mewtwo is not going to have a great time either. I don't know how much energy it, it has. If it has a Side Strike, um, well, then you can just negate all this energy. But doesn't and now going for the rock record this will knock out this will definitely knock out Mewtwo they might no shield that yeah expecting the breaking swipe and then now she does break and swipe the Palkia and I think it was a smart no shield by the opponent because if she went for breaking swipe it would not have knocked out the Mewtwo and getting with that debuff can't get to another break swipe no she does not get there but you still have some Lugia you still have some Sogalio I think you are very fine here especially after that attack drop uh, on your last Pokemon that now the opponent cannot clear anymore so Aqua will do a little damage yeah does nothing Sogalio is such an interesting Pokemon. Even in some of the matchups that don't look good, still are sometimes very good, or at least very playable. Going for another Psychic Fang. Yeah, this is very much open because Lugia is still at like half HP and we'll just take out this Palkia. Even if you Hydro Pump, won't save you. Psychic Fang coming through. And then one Dragon 2 will likely do the job. And there we go. The opponent top left before it even happens. So, those were the battles. I know mostly can be a little bit inaccessible, but honestly, I think some, seeing some of these Pokemon are pretty cool. And makes me want to, you know, strive for them. Let's, let's say that, that I want to go out. Yeah. Um, going out. Anyway, hope you like the battles, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.